A seventh and eighth grade, Ischen Algen. That is God bless you in Hungarian. Ischen Algen. Um, so we are doing lesson 78. I know a lot of you have already done lesson 78. So if you have, you don't have to listen to this video. But you're free to, if you want to, and it's your time, do what you want to do. Or just a little refresher through God's word. That's never a bad thing, is it? So today... Honestly, let's talk about what your attitude is about going to church. Now, I know recently, as we see here on the screen, people are just going to church in their PJs. Goodness gracious. Uh, it's one thing that I know my kids have kind of enjoyed is not having to get up and get dressed. And uh, are we going to lunch afterwards? Do we get breakfast before we go? What are we doing? Um, there's some good things about going to church. Uh, I know I definitely miss seeing the faces of people. I'm I'm a person who likes to shake hands. I'm a person who likes to give hugs. So not being able to do that has been a little bit rough. But I do like uh, getting up like five, ten minutes before church, grabbing a bowl of cereal, sitting down in front of a computer, projecting it on the TV, and us all going to church together. If you haven't experienced church uh, online yet, uh, sjdenver.org uh, slash live, or I think it's renewal denver.org slash live. We'll show you all of St. John's church services online and live. Um, but let's, let's honestly talk about our attitudes about church. Now, are you a person who specifically when you wake up Sunday morning, lights barely shining outside, feels really warm inside your blanket, you're just kind of sitting there and you hear mom or dad say, hey, Time to get up, get ready for church, and uh, I roll time. Uh, do we have to? Is there a later service we can go to? I just want to sleep. What, what, what's your attitude when it comes to church? Are you somebody who's like, well, hallelujah, can't wait. Can't wait, it's going to be awesome. When you get in church, hands are raised up. Maybe your hands aren't raised, but you're paying attention. You're like, Oh, wow, that's a really good point. Let me take my sermon notes. Let me think about everything that we're going to be talking about today. Goodness, that's a good point, Pastor. And man, the band sounds really amazing today. The music, oh, I love this hymn. I can't wait to sing this one. And we're just really happy there. We're listening. We're praising. We're happy. We're cheering folks on as they're sharing their faith. We're sharing our faith. We're getting forgiven. It's all sorts of different things. Or are you somebody who gets maybe a little distracted in church? Everybody else is kind of paying attention. You want to see what your app is saying or your friend texted you funny or you're looking at memes or I don't know. But this thing tends to distract a little bit during church. And sad to say, having church online still doesn't disqualify that. Uh, I noticed a couple of times there was a few times when I got texts while we were watching a live service and I'm like, let me check my text. And Phoenix or Cassidy just goes, dad. Oh, that's right. I don't let you guys look at yours. I shouldn't look at mine. You're right. Back to focusing on there. Or are you somebody who, after that IRO moment of making you get up on your out of your nice, comfortable bed on Sunday morning, go to church, but you did a lot yesterday on Saturday, and so this is how you end up in church. The pastor sees double barreled nostrils huh, looking right at them from the pews as your head tilts back and you completely pass out in church. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what your attitudes are about church, but we're going to talk about a bad attitude some people had back in the day. Getting into Matthew chapter 20, everyone, verses 12 through 17. Um, looking at everything. And how everybody, go ahead and get out your Bibles and get going while you're looking up at that. I look it up. Oh, so Jesus clearing the temple. Matthew 21, 12 through 17. Let's go ahead and read through this. And Jesus entered the temple, drove out all who sold and bought in the temple, and he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, It's written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it into a den of robbers. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna, the son of David, they were indignant. <clears throat> The Jesus guy. And they said to him, do you hear what these people are saying? And Jesus said to him, yes. I've never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies. You have prepared praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany and launched there. 
I'm not sure if this gives us the quiet the picture that we want. So let's uh, take a look from this movie. Oh, money changers. Whoa. She's got a whip. The animals people were selling for sacrifice, for purification. He's letting them out of their pens, letting them loose, keeping people away from him. He's got a whip. Jesus is going off. There's some priest going, what is this guy doing? Oh, there goes all the careful money count. Oh, goodness gracious. Thinking about what's going on here, their attitudes towards church. All right, use your Bible and its headings to answer these questions. Now, looking just before this. Chapter 20, what happened just before this? So if we look at Matthew chapter 20, and what happened just before this in our Bibles, let's see, letters to the vineyard, foretells his death, mother's request, heals two blind men, okay, heals some blind men, all right, so what happened in 19, what happened just before this? Okay. Teach it about divorce, rich young man, all sorts of different things. Let the little children come to me. All sorts of different things happen just before this. But specifically, looking at all the headings in our Bible. Oh, duh. What am I doing clicking through all this? I've got it right here in my Bible. Matthew. Sorry. I'm looking back through chapter 20 and stuff like that. I meant to look at 21 and everything that happened just before he cleared the temple. Oh, there it is. The triumphal, the triumphant, triumphal, the triumphant entry. Do you know what we call that day? Because it's coming up next Sunday, I believe. Palm Sunday. Or maybe we just had, I'm not sure when this is going to be posted for your classroom. But yeah, Palm Sunday. So what just happened? The triumphal entry of Jesus on Palm Sunday. Now what happened after Jesus cleared the temple, according to the Bible headings? He cursed a fig tree, which seems kind of weird to say, screw you, apple tree. No, it was a fig tree. Fig tree specific in olive trees were symbols for Israel. Ooh, and the Hebrew people, God's chosen people. So when he curses the fig tree, there's something going on. Now, let's get into a little bit of personal stuff. What things distract people from worship uh, of God in our world today? All sorts of different things. And I'm not just talking in particular you, but um, other, other people. What sorts of things can people find distracting? Some people find uh, the way the church is run can be distracting. Some people are distracted by the people that are allowed in church. I don't think those sorts of people should be in here. Uh, some people are distracted by headlines on the news. Some people are distracted by sports in the morning. Some people are just 
distracted by a party lifestyle the Saturday night before church goes on. Some people are distracted by another situation going on. They want to check to see if that person's texting me back. There's lots of different things that could be distracting from church today. Let's uh, go down to the review words down there. What does worship mean? Worship means showing devotion and reverence to someone or something. So yeah, worship doesn't necessarily always have to be about someone. It could be something, and we definitely worship things all the time. Showing worship and reverence and devotion when you're sitting there working on something or working to keep something for a long time, you're practically worshiping that thing. You're spending all of your time and devotion towards that. Church, it's a house of worship. Could also mean people everywhere who have faith in Jesus. That's definition for church. So a house of worship, so the actual building, or, well, we are the church, a people who believe in Jesus Christ and belong to him. Now, next, the next page it talks about what we receive in church, thinking about what we receive in church. And there's a bunch of different little beams of light that talk about the different things that happen. Now, there's some of these things I know are missing because we can't physically go to church right now uh, with things going on with COVID-19 and the pandemic and social distancing and stuff. But there are some things that we can still get. But looking at the beams of light, the first and foremost reason why we need to go to church is because we hear the good news of Jesus. We know the good news of Jesus. But when you look around at all the headlines and everything going off and all the different voices and the different things in our own sinful nature— we need to be reminded of that good news. We need to hear what pastor, what the band, what other Christians have to say about it. And we hear that uh, anytime we go to church, whether it's online or in person, hearing the good news of Jesus. Also, good thing the pastor usually brings us is guidance for our Christian life. That would be in the next little beam of light that you come, that you write down there. And, you know, the other thing that's blessed, and we can even get this online just because it's one of the big things that I need to turn to, because I, I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to repentance, when I feel bad for my sins, I really get low. I really, really feel down about myself, and I really just wonder, you know, I know who God is. I know he wants me to do this, or I know he wants me to not do that but I go ahead and do it anyways, or I go ahead and don't do it because I really feel uncomfortable doing what God wants me to do. And I feel so bad about that sin. I'm like, isn't it worse for me? The Bible actually says, yeah, it's worse for you because you know what you're supposed to do, but you don't do it. You know what you're not supposed to do, but you do it anyway. You say, forget you, God, I'm going my own way. Just like Adam and Eve did in the garden. Now, when I think about that, um, Going to church is kind of tough sometimes when, when it comes to confessing our sins. But when we all confess our sins together, everybody else in the church, if I'm thinking about what I'm doing wrong and I look around and I see everybody else is thinking the same sort of thing about what they're doing wrong, and then we then we look up when the pastor holds up his hands and says, I, as a called or ordained servant of the word, do hereby pronounce that Jesus forgives your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <sighs> assurance of forgiveness. If you want to write in the next thing, you could write assurance of forgiveness, or there's one word that uh, summarizes that, and that's called absolution. Absolution. A-B-S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N. Now, Receiving that forgiveness and hearing pastors saying, you know what, you could have said anything you wanted during that sin, the worst sin I could even, even worse than the worst sin I could even possibly imagine. If you did it, thought it, or said it, um, it's still forgiven. Jesus forgives it all. That, the next beam of light, stronger faith. Stronger faith. Now, something that I've definitely been missing about uh, going to church and getting is um, communion. That's something we get when we physically go there. I'm looking forward to the day when we can gather again and share the breaking of bread and the sharing of the blood of Christ uh, through the wine, um, through the cup. Also, another thing that I've, <laughs> that I've definitely been missing. Um, see, I don't. I know some people cry at weddings, so they're like, "Oh, it's such a beautiful moment. They're starting their life together." I tear up at baptisms. 
not something else. I think the last beam of light we write in baptism. I tear up at baptisms and stuff like that. Let me see if I can find this one meme. Um, let's see if I can find it right now. Oh, my cursor is not moving. No. But it's basically, what does baptism look like nowadays in church? Um, oh, here we go. Baptism. COVID-19. <laughs> I saw one pastor baptizing a baby from far away with a super soaker. <laughs> with water gun. Yes, that's how we should be baptizing. This was the meme that I saw. <laughs> uh, social distancing baptism. That's what it was. Checking out this like, little thing. Baptize your name in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mother and Father sitting here grand enough. I'm sure the baby probably wasn't. But yeah, that's definitely something I miss uh, seeing in church. But baptisms can still happen. There are ways we can do it. Social distancing that's not going to involve shooting you in the face with a water gun. If it is something that uh, hasn't been done for you or somebody in your family, somebody you care about and you want to encourage them or you feel encouraged to do so, we can still do that, guys. Baptism can happen all over the time. Um, please give myself, give Pastor a call or an email. We'd love to set something up and talk with you about it. Last part of our Bible uh, lesson for today where it says we worship. I want you to write a prayer that would be appropriate to read before worship and help not just you, but other people realize God's blessings and that help them be ready to focus on and participate in the service. You know, thinking about... Are we in church or are we going to be looking at our phone? Are we in church or are we just really tired? Stop and think about the things that we are going to be receiving. Think about the praise that he deserves. Think about all the reasons that we get to, the comfort that we can feel right now when it comes to when it comes to uh, being in church right now. Um, help think about all the different things that can distract us, but think about the goodness that God has for us, the wonderful feelings that are created when we concentrate on our work and know that we are loved no matter what, we are forgiven no matter what, and we come to him this day. So what, write that prayer in there, and that'll be the end of it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed getting through Lesson 78 or rerunning yourself through it. Hope you guys all have a great day. Bye con Dios. God bless.